I am very excited to be here. My heart is pounding. First, first and foremost, I would like to thank Pastor Hagee and Sandy and Shari for providing the unique platform to share with you more about, about my own story, about my sister's story, and about my new family, the hostages family. My name is Yarden Gonen, and I'm the oldest sister of Romy Gonen, my beautiful sister, who was abducted by Hamas on the morning of October 7th and held in, ca in captivity until today. As the eldest sister of four siblings, my last name, Gonen, which means in Hebrew to protect, paved my way. My parents taught me that as the eldest, I should do whatever it takes to take care of my siblings and make sure no one harms them. And so I did when they were bullied at school, when they needed a ride on home in the middle of the night, or just a shoulder to cry on. On October 7th, I failed. In the last 297 days, my mission to protect my siblings, especially Romy, became so much harder. On the morning of October 7th, Romy was celebrating at the Nova Music Festival with her best friend, Gaia. At 6.40 a.m., I received a phone call from Romy, and she told me, Sis, something is wrong. At, at first, we thought it was just a regular missile attack on the southern border, as we all know it, and it's not supposed to be something regular but it wasn't it. It was some, something way bigger. For four and a half hours, me and my mom were on the phone with Romy, trying to figure out what she should do in this chaotic situation. Romy tried to drive away from the festival area, but the roads were blocked by terrorists from all over. Many of them were dressed as IDF soldiers. What increased tremendously the confusion and helplessness of my sister. The background noises during the conversations sounded like a war zone. Bombing, shooting, screaming. Romy asked me, what should I do? Where should I go? And I, as her protector, didn't have the answer. Romy and Gaia, her best friend, decided to hide in the bushes. At one point, she hushed over the phone. Shh, they are here, and they will hear you. That was one of the scariest moments of my life. After two hours hiding in the bushes, an angel came to the rescue. One of their friends that went to the festival as well came back to rescue them. Even he knew what is going on on the field. And after he rescued 12 people in two different times, we thought that everything is behind us, that everything, everything is about to end, that they are heading home and the worst is behind us. And we will meet in a few hours. But we were wrong. Their car was ambushed. The driver, Ben, and Gaia murdered in front of my sister's eyes, and she was shot on her arm. Even in those horror moments, Romy tried to turn the light, to turn on the light inside all the darkness. She tried to function, to take care of her wound and the others. She tried to help my mom and give her as much as information she could about the car. She even tried to play dead, so maybe the terrorists will spare her. But they haven't. They brutally kidnapped her into Gaza. No sign of life from Romy was received until the hostages deal last November. 
Omi was supposed to be released on the eighth day, but the war broke out again and the hostages really stopped. We were devastated. The released hostages have told us that, they, that she wanted us to know that she is strong. She's fighting to survive and that she knows that we are fighting for her urgent release and that we won't give up and that she is not giving up. <laughs> the light will always overcome darkness. Yes. Well, Omi is a lot more in that story. And I want to share with you a little bit of who she is. Omi is a 23-year-old woman, and she is a ray of sunshine. She has a mesmerizing smile, and she lights up the room when she enters. She is a middle child that would do literally anything for her siblings, including me, even though she is younger than me in seven years. She is a fighter of justice, a strong-willed person, a compassionate soul that loves working with kids on the spectrum, very independent from a young age, a dancer, a huge fan of the leopard print, <laughs> the kind of person that will flourish in a social group, a person that first and foremost would do anything for the people she loves and for everyone that they need. Love thy neighbor as thyself is a sentence that was written on Romy. As you can understand, I am so lucky to be born in the same family as she is. Romy is a person with her whole life ahead of her. She's a real human being. She's a world of family, friends, beliefs, ambitions, dreams. But right now, she's a scared young woman with all her identity stripped off of her, with no light, no food, no fresh water, in the suffocating tunnels underneath the ground in Gaza, with terrorists that can do whatever they want to her, surrounding her 24-7, without being able to choose. But we can choose here, we can choose what we will do, how we will act for their release, how we treat each other, how much intentions we're going to put in our prayers. How would we join hands in this fight so the light would overcome darkness? We have the freedom to choose, and we have to be strong, unite like the hostages, and motivated by our rightful cause, release all the hostages. Yeah. Romy is strong. And from the first day, we know that she will survive this, that she is alive and that she's coming back home. I know that if she's there with people, that what gives her strength, that what keeps her alive, and that she will do anything for the others surrounding her, and that would help her as well. We are all people of faith, and we know that the liberation of the hostages is the key to the victory of the people of Israel, of the Jewish community. For the future of Israel society and for the survival of the Jewish people, we have to release all of them and to not leave anyone behind. Romy's light will always overcome the darkness. In conclusion, I would like to ask you something, something I do every time that I'm speaking about the hostages. First of all, I want you all to know that we're not gonna give up. 
until all the 115 will be home. Second of all, I would like you all to raise, to rise, hold hands if you'd like to, and close your eyes. We all know how the footage of the released hostages looks like. How it looks like when they were released on the deal in November, and how it looks like when the IDF and the security forces released them on their missions. Pray to that, amen, first of all. Let it happen again. I want you all to see in your eyes Feel like you're summoning it, like you're seeing the future and how it will occur. Picture one hostage in your eyes, whoever pops in mind. See the moment that they are passing from the Hamas hands to the Red Cross, and from the Red Cross to the IDF and from the IDF hands, see how each and every one of the living hostages is running towards his family to get the greatest hug of them all. And please, for the ones that are not among the living anymore, reframe in your head the funeral that their family will... Sorry that their family will do to them. See it happening. Pray for it every day. See it in your own eyes, because we know we can make this reality happen. Our mind can create the reality, the future. And hold on to that hope, because hope dies last. And we will not give up on hope, never. Thank you so much for giving me the stage to see you all. It is so... It is so empowering to be here, and I can't wait to bring Romy to see you all and meet you. Thank you for everything you do and will continue doing. Don't lose hope. They will be here, all 115 of them. Thank you.